In part A, we can identify that the electric field expression that we're given is corresponds to a plane wave. And that's because the electric field has the same characteristics as the radiation in the far field of a short dipole antenna. So I'm going to write locally here, because locally at an observation point far from the antenna is going to look like a plane wave. And since the wave is propagating in the radial direction away from the antenna, I'm going to say S is a function of R and theta and phi. And it is pointing in the R hat direction. And we need to put in the expression for the electric field and over to eta since we're in free space. So plugging in, we have R hat and we have eta over, or eta i over r, and that will be squared. And we have sine squared theta and 1 over 2 eta naught. So now I can cancel one of the eta naughts. So I'm going to get just eta naught on the top. i squared over 2r squared and sine squared theta, and the units are watts per meter squared. To find the total power radiated by the antenna in part b, we can integrate the power density passing through the surface of an imaginary sphere centered at the origin. So this will be one meter for convenience. And the dimensions of each infinitesimally small patch on this sphere is r d phi by r sine theta d theta. So that is going to be equal to r ds as we're integrating around the surface of the sphere. Then since we're interested in the flux through the surface of the sphere, we want to take s dotted with r hat. That'll give us the component of s in the r hat direction. So putting all this together, we have P radiated. We're going to integrate all around the whole sphere. So 0 to 2 pi and then 0 to pi. And I'm going to plug in S here that we have from part A. So R eta naught I squared over 2 R squared sine squared theta. And that's dotted with R hat. And then I'm going to put d ds. So that will be r squared sine theta d theta d phi. Now we can pull the constants out, and we can recognize that r hat dotted with r hat is going to give us 1. So we have p radiated is eta naught i squared over 2. And then we can also recognize that 0 to 2 pi d phi is just going to give us 2 pi. And integrating 0 to pi sine cubed theta, which is from this part and this part, is, and that's d theta, this is given to us as being equal to minus cosine theta plus cosine cubed theta over 3. So we have to evaluate this from 0 to pi. And if we do that, we're going to get 1 minus 1 third minus minus 1 plus 1 third and all in all, we're going to get 4 thirds. So plugging this in, our p radiated is 2 pi from this, 4 thirds from the theta integration, and we have eta naught i squared over 2, and that all together is 4 pi eta naught i squared over to create the radiation pattern, we want to normalize S with respect to S max. 
So when we divide s by its magnitude, we get sine squared theta. And we are going to get the same kind of dipole radiation pattern that we've seen. So this is the elevation pattern. And we could also see an azimuthal pattern where this is x and the y, and this is z.